Hey there guys, it's me, Creepin' Jay, and welcome back to Beauty Bitch. I'm losing my- I'm losing my dang mind! Yay! Anyways, this game contains violence, loud gore, mentions of suicide, mentions of self-harm, healing, and death. View discretion is most certainly advised. Yeah, we're gonna skip past all this, blah blah, we don't even care, we don't even care, no, 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 who cares, who cares, blah 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 blah. Ah, you're okay, thank goodness, I was starting to worried. Of course, the pride pink hair, and even brighter disposition about my gaze, she was hovering over my body, kneeling next to me. Her smell felt warm and comforting. She emanated the smell of freshly baked bread and strawberries. The more I thought, the worse the pain in my head became, because you're slowly dying. Ooh! I groaned in pain, slowly gathering the strength to stand up once more. The girl held onto my arm and supported me as I stood up. My legs still ached and my head hurt, but nothing bad seemed to happen to me. Right, there'd be no chance of those silly legends being true. I looked over at her, noticing her fancy attire. What an odd girl. What was she doing out in the forest dressed like that? I suppose I shouldn't judge her so harshly. Her dress is cute, and she did just help me after all. Thank, thank you! Who are you? Strawberry! I own a bakery not too far from here! What's your name, friend? And once again, our name will be Ron. My name is Ron! It's nice to meet you! But did you say your name was Strawberry? <laughs> yeah, my name is Strawberry! Because I'm the Strawberry Witch, silly! Because it's nice to meet you, Ron! Wait, d did she just say witch? She didn't, she didn't appear to be more spiritual kind. She looked more like riding broomsticks, making potions, that, that kind of witch? Or perhaps was she the witch that I heard in the legends all of those years ago? Perhaps she was. Golly, you look way worn out. Say, how about you come and rest in my bakery for a while? You must be thirsty. I can give you something lovely to drink on the house. I would love to. Sure, why not? What could possibly go wrong? You're an FBI agent, after all. I'm a drug dealer. We both go together. Totally. This girl might seem strange, but God, I was thirsty. I had no idea how long I've been out there. Something to drink sounds so good right now. How about original Coca-Cola? <laughs> the Lord that came from my inner child wanted to believe she was the witch from the legend persuaded me even more. The reason I came to the spores could always wait a little longer. Besides, she didn't seem like a threatening type of person. Thank you. I will love that. But first, can you tell me more about what you mean by a witch like you? Oh, silly me. You probably don't have people like me where you're from. Nope, I sure don't. I'm a strawberry witch. I imagine you can center around strawberries, plants, and all things sweet. I use my magic to make lovely treats in hopes of making people smile. So, no broomsticks, huh? No granting someone's greatest desire either, huh? Her answer was a little disappointing. Still, I couldn't help but feel that there was something greater beneath the surface. Huh? No! Although, I suppose I could make strawberry fly if I worked hard on it. Yeah, this girl was harmless at least. Indeed she is. Surely. So wait you the witch enthusiastically led me through the winding paths of the forest. She appeared as though she knew every tree, bush, and rock, Dwayne the Rock Johnson, like the back of her hand. As we walked, one question lingered in my mind. Why on earth are you, what on earth are you doing in a dark forest with a creepy lady? Or, or that, or that. Why would you build a bakery in a supposedly cursed forest? Surely it must be a bad business to set up shop at where people are too scared to go. Nah, you're probably trying all the markipliers here. Maybe that's where her witchy magic kicked in. Perhaps she has her own reasons I simply can't see yet. I tried to rationalize the answers to each question that kept invading my head. My thoughts kept me so preoccupied that it was frankly a shock to me when we had arrived at the location. What the? The house strawberry led me to a pretty made entirely out of cake with sugary frosting on, on the candy-scented rooftop. It looks so delectable. 
<laughs> the improvements would see any child's greatest dream. A very creative, imaginative child, particularly particularly sweet tooth as <laughs> Was it real? <laughs> this all felt like an entirely different world. <laughs> it was almost as if I had stepped into a fairy tale. <laughs> Walking through fields of strawberry bushes and close to the house, I can see a sign that the Strawberry Witch's Bakery! <laughs> Ta-da! Here we are! What do you think of the exterior, Ron? It takes so long to perfect my magic in order to make anything this cute! You know, let's just speed through this part. Oh well, big deal. I don't want anything. I'm good. Cry. You're gonna cry? Oh, you little baby! Alright, so. The interrogation. The FBI agent, the Russian spy, huh? Or was it a Soviet spy, huh? Or was it Sputnik? Are you, are you the reincarnation of Sputnik? Is that what you are? I'm sure you are. You even have the red, and everybody knows that red means communism. After all, the body communist, all you do is ask somebody if they, if they think sharing is caring. If they say yes, they are a guaranteed communist. And they're looking around. I don't, I don't trust it. Interrogate the child. Interrogate the creepy woman. All right. She ran off quickly to the kitchen once more, worrying for their problems. <laughs> she should just own up to it. This is so frustrating. Wait. She wasn't worth going after. I needed the peace and quiet for a while, anyways. Slowly, I sat back down in the strawberry-themed chair. A moment turned out to be quite a long time. Approximately 20 minutes have come and gone, and still no sign of strawberry. Exhausted. I didn't realize how exhausted I truly was until this moment. Who knew that a chair that would normally be mildly uncomfortable could be so inviting? I suppose resting my eyes until she comes back wouldn't hurt anyone. The slightest loud noise, and I'll bolt out of here. I knew to still be on guard. But I needed the rest desperately. A few squeaks slowly woke me from my sleep. I opened my eyes to a truly peculiar sight. What the? Was I dreaming? A few very small creatures were nudging toward a delectable looking cake closer to me. A few very small creatures were nudging forward a delectable looking cake closer to me. They were like Small bunnies, but also strawberries? How odd. Maybe that girl wasn't lying about being a strawberry witch, at least. I tried to reach out for the creatures, but they timidly took a few steps back once seeing me move even slightly. I retracted my hand and drew my attention to the cake in the center. Topped with delicious strawberries and excellent frosting, it was apparent this was one of the st strawberries cakes. Perhaps these creatures took pity on me for having to wait so long for the witch. I don't want their pity, however. The growing, the growling sounds on my stomach made were catching my attention. I must have been asleep for longer than I thought. I was already hungry. Fine! I sighed. Oh, what, that was one way to sigh, I guess. And took a slice of the cake the little strawberry bunnies had prepared for me. With no hesitation, I took a bite. Chewing the dessert in the mouth, I noticed something fell off. The texture, the consistency. This didn't taste like cake at all. The hell was it? Observing the inside of the cake should have been the first thing I did. God, how could I be so careless? Looking closer at what I was eating shook me to my core. This looked like ground up meat with frosting on top of it. Ugh. If I had to hold back the violent urge to vomit all over the table, all over the small strawberry creatures too. I had my fair share of steak, pork, and whatnot. However, this, this tasted nothing like any of those things. I immediately freaked out. I spit out what was left of that cake onto my plate. The strawberry bunnies, the strawberry bunnies looked up, looked up at me at once, 
I had to get out of here right now. I bolted for the door before another thought could cross my mind. Was this strawberries doing? Did my words really bring her to feed me? How the hell was that? The taste still lingered on my tongue. Oh, how I badly wanted to take sandpaper to it. And now it down to nothingness. I went for that to that horrible, horrible taste. I ran throughout the forest once more, just trying to get as far away from my bakery as possible. Think about what could have been made think about what could have been made me feel sick. Hunched over I clutched my stomach desperately. Before I knew it, I was thrown up all over the dirt floor. God the Demot. I felt so weak. Every inch of my insides felt like they were in polluting. Well, at least I made it out of there before she do something horrible to me. I think it was finally time for me to do what I meant to do in this forest in the first place. And what would that be? Cannibal cake! Cannibalism! Yay! <laughs> Alright, yep, 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 yep. So now let's see. Now we're gonna be nice. Now we're gonna be nice to her. Let's speed through this. Blah, 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 blah. Alright, there we go. Ugh, oh, ugh, oh, my head. Why is there always a pain in my head? Waking myself up, I noticed I wasn't in the bakery anymore. I was looking right at the bed, in the room covered with strawberry themed furniture and wallpaper. Despite not knowing, despite not being inside the bakery, this room smelled greatly of freshly baked, baked bread and strawberries. This had to be strawberries room, no doubt in my mind. Even more alarming, however, there were the large vines wrapped tightly around my entire body, vines with strawberries growing off them. What the hell was even going on here? Why, why would a strawberry do this to me? God damn it. That's why I guess we're sussing a finder. What's she going to kill me? I wish she wouldn't use me for some weird magic stuff I didn't even understand. All I knew I had to escape. I had to get out of here before she came back up to get me. I struggled against the vines, only barely managing to pry off my hands out of this fruit scented grasp. That's not a hard familiar sound come from the stairs. Little buddy! I whispered as he wild close to where I was tied up. That's a very loud whisper. Any chance you can help me out of this? The tiny strawberry bunny licked around from side to side, observing the room. I watched him as he hopped up on the nightstand and used her tiny little hands to put over a basket. The crash of the basket wasn't that loud, thankfully. Two items caught my attention that were within reach of my free hand. And I had time to use one. I have to think fast. Now it's time to read the kid's diary, the girl's diary. I got the diary without thinking. Something in my gut told me that there would be some sort of information, some sort of answer, something that at all that would help me make sense of all of this. With my single hand, I began flipping through the pages. Oh. Interesting. Strawberry's Diary, Day 1. I finally did it! I proved myself enough with my magic to be sent on a special mission. They told me that I'm finally ready to fulfill my purpose. I'm finally ready to make a good impact on the world. I'm bringing this diary with me to fill, to fill out all my fun adventures. Apparently, I'm being sent to some sort of pocket dimension. They said it'll be just me for a while, but I know how to garden and bake, so at least food won't be an issue. I asked them what the purpose of the pocket dimension was, and I saw that people with great desire often find themselves lost in forests like these. But they sent me here, and my job is to help them fulfill their true desires. I'm not sure how good it'll be f I'll be at fulfilling desires. I'm just a strawberry witch after all. But I won't let anyone down. I want to fulfill my purpose no matter what. I'll be a few books about wish granting and to study up on. I could really use any help I can get. I'm sure I'll find some way to help others, right? Day 5 I absolutely love my little bakery. So far, no one has come yet. 
but I search every edge of this pocket world just in case pretty often. I'll admit, I'm getting a little anxious out here all by myself. I really hope these people desire sweet treats. <laughs> they never did tell me what what's supposed to happen after I help the people. I guess so there's one back into the forest and find a way out. I don't know. I'm sure I'll, I'm sure I'll update this more if I finally answer. Day 16. Someone finally came! A girl! A kind and pretty girl! She and I talked in my bakery for a while, and I gave her absolutely every treat her heart desired. It was so lovely talking to another person for such a long, long time. I'm really going to miss her. She ran back into the woods just now. I offered to let her stay longer, but she said she couldn't. She looked exasperated and disputant. There was a complicated look in her eyes. I didn't quite understand. I'm gonna stop reading like that now. My voice is my voice is killing me. I hope I helped her. I did everything I did everything correctly, right? Day 17. Oh my god! No, stop that! Oh god. The girl she Why? I found her by the lake. She had oh god. She drowned. She's not alive anymore. Here one moment turned to absolutely nothing but an empty shell the next. What what do I do? They didn't they didn't prepare me for this. Day twenty. Two and a zero. I'm starting to feel a little bit better after all this. I'm sure it was all an accident, right? I did everything I could. I said I'm not gonna be like that, but I'm going to anyways. I just need to look forward. Tomorrow's another day, and I'm gonna help many people. I still hear the girls way sometimes. I only talked to her once, but I miss her dearly. God, I don't know what voice I'm doing anymore, but who knows. What happens if I can't help anyone? It's my job, my true purpose. I'm supposed to help these people fulfill their desires. I just have to keep trying. Day 42. The most important number is 42. Why? Why did this keep happening? I'm really starting to freak out here. Three new people have come and gone. None of them stayed long. All of them. I found all of them. All of their bodies decaying in different places in weird ways. Oh wow. One of them stabbed himself so many times it's impossible to count. The stench of blood sinks so much into the dirt. I can still smell it sometimes walking past that area. Besides the girl in the lake, I've been another girl. Equally kind, but I found her body covered up in so many cuts and scars. She bled out far before I had the chance to get to her. The other hung themselves. I still remember seeing their silhouette through the trees. It was a horrifying sight. Even more disturbing was how their bodies swung side to side with each gentle breeze. Oh, wow. There's no one else out there. This was any mistake. This is on purpose. I'm going to throw up. Day 89. I haven't been able to help anyone, not a single person. It all ends the same way. No matter what I do or what I give them, the people always leave. They always... The pocket they mention. They s they step into a suicide forest. Did I actually call it? Everyone's greatest desires. It's to die. I found the most recent customer suicide note to prove it, saying exactly how, how all they wanted in this world was to die. I worked on trying to practice magic outside of my expertise. I haven't had luck yet, but I'm getting desperate. Something, anything to make them stay. Anything to keep them alive and out of the forest. Day 163. Stop that. Is it? It's not my fault. I keep trying harder and harder to make staying more appealing to them. To make being alive more attractive. Even just for one more day. Nothing works. Am I destined to be a failure of a witch? I keep studying up more and more on wish granting. However, it's so difficult to get a clear grasp on. This is nothing like growing strawberries. It's so lonely out here in the forest. I've started making small creatures just to have someone to talk to who I don't find dead the following day. 
I try to make bunnies, but my magic, it's still... I just have to keep trying. Day, who even knows what that number is? I'm so tired. I've lost track of all the days. It's been so long since I lost even rolling here. For a while, I couldn't bear to leave my bakery. I was so terrified of something horrible happening. Scared of seeing something terrible. I feel terrified every day of waking up and seeing someone new. Someone I cared about gone from this world. And it's true that every person that steps foot in this bakery I care about. I keep thinking that maybe if I just try harder, if I'm nicer, if I give them anything they want, possibly things will be different. Maybe they'll stay. But maybe I'm just being selfish here. Do I want them to stay because I want them to stay alive? Or do I want them to stay because of lonely desperation? I haven't been able to save a single person. I don't think even I'm that good of a person anymore myself. If I was there in person, things would be different. I'd be able to prevent this all. But I can't. I can't do anything right. It all feels so out of my control. My mental state is worse than the day. I don't know how much longer I can take this. I'm getting desperate. The page after that was ripped out. The Red Dead Redemption video that I edited today also has a suicidal guy in it. <sighs> and I know people, and I know suicidal people too. Fortunately, none of them went through with it. I closed the book. I had read enough. So that's why I'm in this predicament. Some relief overcame me as I realized that she wasn't out for blood. It seemed like the exact opposite. She was trying to prevent another trying to prevent another death, even if her methods of doing so were flawed. My deepest desire, my reason for coming here. She was right. Despite that, despite what I may have said in the past, I I got lost in the forest on purpose. I had full intentions of ending my life from the moment I stepped into this pocket dimension. I've always clung onto those superstitions subconsciously. They always brought me back to childhood, back to a time when things were easier. Now everything was a mess. Everything felt so hopeless, so out of my control. Strawberry's words in her diary. They resonated with me deeply. I can't put her through this again. No matter what I feel about my worthless life, she doesn't deserve to see another corpse. I gently put the book down the second I heard humming coming from up the stairs. Strawberry. Whoa, whoa, whoa! You're awake! Straw Bunny, you're here too! I, uh, golly, I'm awfully sorry about all of this! I just kinda panicked and, um... Well, I, I didn't want you to get hurt out here, so I, uh... I didn't really think this through. Strawberry, it's okay. Do you think you can undo these vines? Well... I would really love to do that for you, Ron. But I... I can't risk leaving you out in the forest. Please understand. It's not safe out there. I have no intentions of going to that forest. Strawberry looked a bit taken aback by my response. Uh-huh. But I thought you... Forgive me. But, I read her diary while you were gone. Eh? I... You've truly been kind to me, Strawberry. You've done nothing but show your kindness to others. But the world has only shut you out. I know how that feels. Strawberry looked down at the floor as I spoke. You've, forgot you've forgotten how to be kind to yourself, though. 
Other people's lives aren't your responsibility, and I hate those a-holes who put you here knowing this would happen to you. Why are you saying this to me? I should be saying this to you! You came in this forest for a reason. But you've done nothing but be kind to me and Straw Bunny. You're even trying to come for me now when I did horrible things to you. She started to tear up. You're so much more kind than you'll ever know. You don't deserve this. You don't deserve any of this. I mean, I know much about you, but... Whatever happened in your life to bring us to this place... I am so, so sorry. I... I'm sorry for making you stay. Strawberry lifted her, lifted her hand, and as she did, the vines retracted and let me loose from their grip. I, th I stood up and pulled Strawberry into a tight hug. Who knows the last time either of us had had one. But we both needed one. I felt her shakily hug me back, crying into my shoulder. I'm not going anywhere. I think... I think I'd like to stay for a while, if that's okay. But no! I, I shouldn't force you to! You're not forcing me to. I want to. It's understandable, though, if you'd rather I not. No! I mean, uh, no! Really! Would love to have you stay for as long as you desire. If that is, uh, what you desire. I smiled and pulled away from the hug. Strawberry slowly calming down and wiping the tears away from her face. What I desire. I think what I desire now is the company of someone like Strawberry. Someone who understands. Maybe, bit by bit, things can get better for the both of us. At least for now. We wouldn't have to be alone. <laughs> Ron! They're going to eat all of our decorations! <laughs> it had been quite a while since I moved in with Strawberry and the Straw Bunnies. I can't exactly remember how long though. Since doing so, I've noticed her mood greatly improving. She's taught me how to bake and garden, and for me, I taught her about folklore and superstitions of different cultures. You know, it's funny, I was talking about folklore with one of my friends this morning. I've even watched her magic blossom and improve. She can grant small wishes with ease now. We've, we've seen people come and go through the bakery. Some of them didn't have the happiest of endings. But we kept saying, Strawberry at least... But we kept trying. Strawberry at least doesn't have to carry the burden alone. And she's doing a better job of not taking responsibility for it either. She has hope that one day, things will be different. I'll admit, her optimism has really rubbed off on me. Hello, Earth the Rod! You're dozing off again! <laughs> sorry, sorry. Well, hey, if you're not worried about me eating too many strawberries, then you should stop growing such tasty ones. She left her sweet, melodic laugh. Oh, I'm glad you like them! Let's make sure we have enough to decorate all these cakes, okay? Alright, I suppose so. Life wasn't going to get any easier. I still think about why I originally came here from time to time. But slowly, things will be okay. Things will be okay for the both of us. Yay! The good ending! Woohoo! <sighs> well, this is fun. You know, I was skeptical at this game first when I looked it up. I, mean, I was talking about pictures, but... Pleasantly surprised. As I said. Yeah, thank you, Mossbot. This was actually quite fun. So, uh, thanks for watching. And I'll see you in next whatever video I make. I'll see you in... I forgot how to do my outro. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one, wonderful video. Whatever one that may be. Bye-bye.